sometimes when the pawn operates as it should, meaning like you don't really see any concerns, you know, we, you often neglect to test the water parameters and making sure everything's okay. Um, and for most pawns, if it's stable, you know, the, the pawn keeper typically know what's going on. But I still think that it's really important that you should do a test at least once a week, right? Now, I do certain tests almost daily. Um, not the whole suite of water parameter testing, but just a few that I do almost daily, which includes nitrite testing and uh, testing for my KH at this moment. Now, so here is almost a full suite of a testing parameter for my water. And we got the nitrite. As you can see, the nitrite level is very good right now, right? So uh, it's between 0 0.25 and 0 0.5. So anything below 1 is what you want. The, uh, the ammonia is uh, between 0 and 0 0.25. The nitrate is around... Well, the nitrate, I want to say it's between... See, it's kind of hard to see, but... Technically, it's between 0 and uh, 5 ppm, which is very good. Uh, typically, between ammonia, nitrite, and nitrate, a lot of people often have a lot of nitrate. And I think the reason why is because they just don't have enough surface area in their media for algae or other stuff to, uh, to take it out. But because of, you know, I got almost 100 cubic feet of uh, filter media for a small pond, so pretty much can gets consumed easily. And then here's my pH. And uh, my pH is now on the higher range, you see? Uh, before it was at 7.5, now it's closer to, or I should say, it's, yeah, it's, it looks like it's above 8. And the reason for that is because I've been purposefully and intentionally increasing the carbonate, the calcium carbonate content in my water. Um, and I'm going to do the KH test right now because this is um, a really important parameter that Probably not every pond keeper or koi keeper looks after, but um, testing for carbonate is important because the carbonate is used in pretty much all of the biological processes that's happening in the pond. So everything in the pond is taking away the, the calcium carbonate. So having more doesn't hurt. It's having less, that's when you run into all kind of trouble. So I kind of have an idea of how many drops I should, um, should um, put in. So rather than just doing one and, and keep shaking it, I'm gonna I'm gonna start by going straight to nine. Okay, so here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that's nine. And then I'm gonna do a little, just turn it upside down. You see, it's still blue, right? So it's gotta turn yellow. Here we go. All right, we're gonna put another one. My goal is to get over 200 ppm of uh, calcium carbonate. So that's 10. Now if it's 10, that means I get about, if it's turned yellow, it means I have about 180 ppm. And as you see, it kind of turns yellow already, right? So there we go. That is about 10 degrees of hardness for KH. Um, Although technically this is probably going to be between 11 and 10 actually since it's not fully yellow yet. Um, let me show you what it looks like if it's completely yellow. So guarantee the next drop is going to bring it to yellow. There we go. See that? That is what it looks like. So if anything, I want to say 10.5, okay? So 10.5 will get me close to 190 ppm. Because every, de every degree of uh, calcium hardness or carbonate hardness that's tested with this kit, um, it's like a 20, well, every degree should be about 17, 18 um, ppm. So just multiply that and you kind of get the results. All right, so let's talk more about this stuff. Um, the calcium or the carbonate hardness really helps with a lot 
of the process in your pond, right? Um, we're talking about mostly nitrification in, in case of the pond. Um, but it's used by things in the pond or different organisms and but mostly it's used by the nitrification process so anytime I feed a lot and I notice if I feed a lot consistently when I say a lot I'm talking about like more than 10 times a day the KH drops because it's getting used up in the nitrification and for the longest time my pond was between 5 and 6 degrees of uh, KH which gives me around 80, 80 to 100 ppm of uh, calcium carbonate and I thought that was good enough right because as you can see I got nothing but oyster shells and kept it kind of stable even in those white bins I got oyster shells um, so I got a lot of oyster shells so everything was stable but even then like um, the KH was continuing to drop and if I didn't increase it I guarantee you the oyster shells which I originally thought was going to be sufficient but turns out um, the bacteria seems to prefer the um, the free flowing carbonate inside the water versus the shell itself so it's just probably easier for them to just grab it in the water and then I ended up buying baking soda to uh, increase it into my uh, well to drop into the pond and I thought I'd, I had cut a lot but turns out I I needed more because the more I feed the more I needed the baking soda so let me show you how much I've used up So here is a bag of pure baking soda purchased from Costco, right? 13.5 pounds. I've used more than half of this already. And if you look at the back of the label right here, you kind of see uh, how much should be added. 1,000, well, so this is assuming 10,000 gallons of water. And if you see, if you notice right here on the left, fill uh, or column, every 20 ppm interval you add three pounds right of baking soda to bring it up and there the label says 110 ppm or higher don't add baking soda so they're just assuming you're using this in a swimming pool which is fine but for us when a uh, koi pond user um, just ignore that part so basically my pond is about 3.7 well 3,700 gallon or 3,800 gallon um, so roughly about 1.75 pounds uh, for every 20 ppm difference because if you notice here uh, well actually I, I should say that maybe about a, a slightly more maybe maybe well slightly less I should, should divide this by three so I'm only you I should only be using about a pound or 1.25 pounds for every ppm increase right for 20 um, ppm increase so I started at around 80 so to get to um, to get to uh, 200 I should be adding it about six more steps right so if anything it's just seven seven or so pounds of a baking soda well I've used almost seven if not more than that and my ppm right now at 10.5 degrees um, slightly still less than 200 ppm so and I've been adding a cup of this like continuously for the last um, two days and, and I added it a cup for every maybe six seven hours and I still can't get it over 200 ppm so either I'm feeding too much and they're eating they're eating all of my calcium carbonate or something else is going on in the pond that I'm not aware of but I'm almost I'm way more than halfway done with this bag and still not enough in my pond so I'm gonna go ahead and get another scoop what it looks like right here so this one cup is actually now it's not a pound but it's still pretty substantial right here gotta be at least a good six seven ounce so what I do is I just add the baking soda into my um, filter line right here and it dissolves super fast like for example like if so even if I drop it straight in the water look how quickly it dissolves it can't even see it after a few seconds.
Yeah, so I've been adding baking soda continuously to try to increase the alkalinity above 200 ppm. I just feel like that's the number that really buffers everything and also helps with nitrification. It's probably the number that I always want to keep consistent, if not slightly higher. And I think it's uh, really important that if you are feeding a lot, that you're doing this. Because guarantee, if you are not putting in more baking soda into your pond, your whole nitrification process slows down and um, just everything just goes bad. So keep an eye on that, make sure you're testing it with the kit and uh, you know, every week, twice a week maybe, just drop in maybe a cup of this stuff. Really, really helpful. And look at my, um, my pond's got a lot of foam. I, my, my foam fraction is working, but I've been feeding a little too much. And uh, although um, it's hard to see in the video because of um, early morning reflection from, and just not no direct sunlight. But I can still see the bottom of the pond if I look carefully enough. So I'm not concerned with the water quality. It just has a lot of foam, which is getting taken out by the fractionator. Um, daily and nightly and then after a few days when it starts taking out all the foams and it will just stop it will stop for a few days and then it will go back again